This is a twin cylinder double acting oscillating steam or compressed air engine that I designed, uh, drew on my computer and machined all the parts. Uh, it will run on air pressures as low as even 10, certainly 15 pounds per square inch so it certainly doesn't need anything higher than uh, oh, 30 or 40 pounds per square inch for safety. I'm going to start the engine on slow speed. This is achieved by the means of this lever here which is a very simple throttle and reversing valve and you'll see as I bring it towards me it speeds up. <coughs> it's running at the moment on about oh, 25 pounds per square inch air pressure and as I reduce the speed it will stop in the middle and start again in the opposite direction so it's reversible and it's self-starting because of the two cylinders at 90 degrees to each other one of the ports is always open and therefore it doesn't need a twist of the crankshaft as many single cylinder or all single cylinder oscillating engines need in order to start I'm going to give you another view in a moment. I'll stop the engine now. This gives another view of the pistons connecting rods to the crankshaft and uh, you'll see that the lower end of each piston is blocked off with a simple uh, sealing gland so that air pressure or steam can be applied to both sides of the piston so that uh, when it's running air pressure is working or steam pressure is working in both directions. I'll speed it up now. it down and now start running in the opposite direction I'll give you another view take of the whole engine taken from a different position. This view shows the other end of the engine. This is the reversing and throttle valve. This is the actuating lever and you can see it has small holes that means that it could be actuated from a radio control servo very easily. There is very little, absolutely no resistance to this. It doesn't need a huge servo for that. This is the drive shaft. This would be for a simple universal joint for a propeller shaft in a boat. And there is a V in this part so that if necessary it could uh, drive a simple V-belt. This is the 
flywheel, obviously not very efficient because it's a small diameter, uh, but at least it fits into the space available and it's all that is really necessary. This is the rather complicated uh, pipework to the both ends of the cylinders when a simple single cylinder oscillating engine of course doesn't have this it will merely have two pipes going in and if there's no reversing involved one is merely the inlet and the other one is the exhaust in this case to the reversing and throttle valve uh, this is the inlet for steam or in this case compressed air and this is the exhaust and according to how the valve is placed the pressure will either go to this side with exhaust coming this way or pressure going that way with exhaust coming this way creating the uh, reverse of the engine itself. I'm going to start operating it so you can uh, see Here, you see, if I stop the exhaust, it will stop the engine. Now, I'm going to repeat. I'm going to change the position of the camera and give you a slightly different view. I'll just start it again. Well, there you are. I hope you like my little engine. I thought anybody who's interested in miniature models and uh, engines, steam, all of these things would, would perhaps uh, enjoy looking at this. Anyway, it's up to you. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thank you very much.